This is a quick tutorial on how to use the content authoring APIs in Crafter Studio. First, let's look at the documentation. Here you'll find detailed documentation on how to use the Crafter Studio APIs. You can get to that documentation by going to docs at craftercms.org, choosing the version, in this case Crafter 3.1, then going to developers, and then to a specific project. In this case, we're interested in Crafter Studio. And uh, if we look at Crafter Studio, we'll see that there's the API. We can click on that. There are two API documents listed, API version one and API version two. Sometimes this causes confusion. You can see here that version two of the Crafter API contains a specific set of APIs and version one contains all the rest of the APIs. So these are not mutually exclusive APIs. The full API of Crafter Studio is the combined set of these two APIs and uh, we are slowly transitioning uh, APIs from style of version one to style two. Let's go ahead and exercise an API from each of these documents. So let's start with API version one. And the first thing we're gonna do is log in and we actually need to log in to execute any API. There are a number of ways to authenticate in Crafter Studio. We're gonna talk about the most straightforward one, which is just the login API. And you can see here uh, that the URL is API one services, API one security login. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna execute this uh, through Postman. And it's, a, it's going to be a post and uh, it's going to require us to send in a, a username and a password. Now, presumably this will all take place in the real world over HTTPS, so it's all secure and not in the clear. In our case, it's gonna be on my local server, so we're just gonna pass this in uh, in the clear. So we're gonna open up Postman, which is just a common developer tool. You can see here we've set up a post uh, we've set up our uh, server name, localhost, our port 8080, the application is studio, and then there's our API endpoint, API slash one slash services slash API slash one slash security slash login.json. Okay, in our post body, we've put our username and password, which i have just using a default install, and I have um, also set up a, a header so if we go to the header section here an xsrf token uh, and here uh, you can basically for the purpose of calling the api put any value uh, that you want as long as you maintain a consistent value across all of your api calls uh, any value will work so we've got the post body uh, we are sending that in as raw and setting the type to JSON. We've got the headers set up and uh, we can then send that request. What comes back is a JSON object. It's got the username, a first name, a last name, an email address, and an authentication type. Just for the sake of example, let's change the password to be something invalid and send that post. Okay, you can see we get it unauthorized. Another thing you want to look at is that when you send your cookies, okay, you have a J session ID and also an XSRF token with the same value. And this is required in your future API call. So you want to make sure that's part of your cookies. And by default, Postman will send the cookies for you. It will, it will capture cookies and send those cookies. So you just want to make sure you're sending the right value. So if you have any issue with your request going through to the server, make sure that you're authenticated, you have a valid J session ID, you have a valid uh, XRSF token in the header, and then you have a matching uh, token in the cookies. After that, all of your requests should work. Now let's call the second API, which in our case is the users. So here you can see this is a, um, in this case, this is a get request and you can see it's part of API 2. Let's go jump back to the documentation and look at that quick. So we're gonna jump back to the documentation and we're gonna to go to Crafter Studio API and version two, which is in the Swagger documentation. 
So the version 2 documentation is much, much nicer and more modern. And here you can see we're going to call this, uh, this API for users. And there are no um, required parameters and so on. So we're just going to use the simple, uh, the simple form of this API. Let's jump back into Postman and let's take a look at this request. So right off the bat, we have our URL, localhost studio API to users. So much more simple URL. We have no parameters to send in at this time. The headers we're sending in are our X, uh, SRF token with the same value that our authentication was done with. And in our cookies, we see the same J session ID and the same XSRF token value here. So now that we have that all set up, we can go ahead and send our request. And you can see we get back the single user that's in the system. And just to make sure this is working, let's go and create a user in the system and then run this again. We should get a additional user here listed. So let's go ahead and do that. Go to Studio, go to Users, and let's do a new user here. Another thing to point out here is that everything that the UI does is through this exact same API. So everything that you see the UI do you can also do through the API. Let's go ahead and save this user. We've created the user, and now we're gonna jump back into Postman and re-execute this and see this total go up to two, and we should see the information for our new user. And here you do see uh, two users, and we see both users in the system. Hopefully, this was helpful in getting a quick understanding on how you can execute Crafter Studio authoring APIs. Thanks for watching.